It's been a while since we've been out with the Crowman on the pigeons. Everything is just right. He's done the recce, he's got the shells, the hide, and he's got the guns. But even with all the preparation, today is going to be tough. Last month, Andy lost Ruby, his telepathic fox red Labrador, in a tragic accident. He knows we need to talk about it, but it's too much for him. He's kept the whole thing pretty quiet. She was an important part of Crow's shooting and family life. She's brilliant, isn't she? David once asked Andy how he trained her. He replied, luck. Most gun dog owners know that to be true. Sometimes you just get one that can read your mind. From these recent photos, it looks like Crow will soon have a new girl in his life, Rosa with the purple collar. We will, of course, keep you up to date with her progress, but now we have a pea crop to protect. We've got about 250 acres of peas here. We've had a travel light today, because it's quite a walk, it's about nearly a mile to walk to where we are. The peas on the rest of the on the rest of the acreage, they've got away, but it's just a heavy bit of ground here. They haven't got away, and the pigeons seem to be targeting this a bit. The problem is they can land anywhere else on the peas on the top, because it's a, like I say, it's a good crop. But here they are, pretty sparse. It's ideal. Got an oak tree here, or small oak tree here to the right. The wind's not quite how we want it, but hey ho, um, it is what it is. The ideal place to be over the other side, but that's another half a mile. So, and uh, I don't fancy doing that. So. But now we'll give it a go here. The wind's coming in the left hand side. Hopefully, stuff us in and come across, come across into the right and across in front of us. So it'd be quite nice. There is a few birds flying about. There's a few going through the top there now. Because Crow hasn't been shooting for a bit, he has no dead birds for a pattern. But he does have the surprisingly effective decoys from UK Shoot Warehouse. Yeah, these are the, the silo stocks from UK Shoot Warehouse. They're quite handy when you. You've got a long walk, you just stick them in. I'll put my nets, I'll get my nets, cartridges, I'll get everything in, in this box. I can get a dozen, 15 of these, no trouble. Um, so, but they work quite well, especially if it's a bit windy. It's only just to draw, get them close enough for me to shoot. Um, get a few real ones out and then uh, just bring these in close. Just have the odd one of these out there, just blowing in the wind, but just have real ones out there. Still several moving about, which is quite nice. Um, especially early like this, it's only half 10, quarter to 11 be another couple three hours while they really start feeding at two o'clock. be a good time at two o'clock onwards, it'll be quite nice. As soon as we step in the hide, the birds head for the decoys. What a great feeling. You know it's going to be a fun few hours. <laughs> it's so nice when it works. Yeah, that's the thing with pigeon shooting, you have more bad days than good days, but when they decoy like that. I'm using the over and under today, because uh, I usually use the old semi, I dare so I'll go back to that later on if a few bigger numbers come in, but, but at the moment they're, they're just ones and twos. I'll play with this because I'm shooting next week on the clays, and I've been using this and I've been shooting really well with it, so I've, I've quite fallen in love with it. So. But I've got the old semi there, if they start big numbers start coming in and uh, I'll use that but at the moment I'm going to carry on playing with the uh, 692 that I've, uh, I've got. For the first time we have the excellent shot cam to stick on the end of Andy's Beretta 692. The camera is ideal for explaining lead and gun positioning. Before you start you need to calibrate the unit so the dot sits where you're aiming. Then you are up and running with the video files stored on a micro SD card. David, the inventor, is a Scot based in the States. You can see why so many shooting schools are now using them as a training aid. Crow even adapts his shooting to film the bird as it falls. Plus, the other David will never be abused by Crow for missing one of his shots again. As well as slow-mo on the shot cam, we have 200 frames per second from the normal camera. In a couple of clips, you can see the wad opening and delivering the shot before slowing. Unfortunately, we weren't able to show the shot cam footage to Crow in the field for his analysis, but we will next time.
didn't know how they was going to decoy what they were going to do to die, so I just grabbed a slab of Pigeon Extreme. Um, if they'd really decoyed well, I would have. Uh, I've got a, a slab of um, clear pigeon. I would have run back and got those from the truck, but they've been. Some have come, some haven't. Um, we've had some nice long ones, and we've had some nice close ones. Um, but no, they're good cartridge. It's something I've got used to, and I'll get on well with them. The birds come in ones and twos. We can see some across the way heading for an oak, but it's not worth moving. What is obvious from a couple of birds that were heavily committed is the whirly is too much, so Crow takes it out of the equation. We should have done that. Should we put the whirly out? And when we first put it out, there's a couple where to look and come in, but I think we're just going to put a it was as if it was a white bag out there, those ones. They just didn't want to know. So I'm going to try a flapper for a bit. Either a flapper or a floater, one of them. So, um, they are looking, so it's, it's not, as if they, not as if they're wanting to see a lot before they come in. So. Crow is building a bag, though he reckons he'll make half a bag, not a recognised unit. The afternoon flies by and Crow finishes with a crow. So you had a good day. Shame you've got to leave early. You've been, you've been here an hour. So shame you're going. No, it's been a good day. Come out and shoot a dozen, twenty pigeons is nice. And I don't know what we shot. Should probably shot sixty odd here. And we've still got another, probably stay another couple of three hours at least. Um, so hopefully get a few more. Might make it up to 70 or 80. If they have a feeding spurt later on, I might get a few more if someone stirs them up. They've probably gone on to one of the other fields, but only wants a walker to go through, stir them up, and they fly around for a bit. It's like just a minute we've sat here and hadn't seen a pigeon for 20 minutes, half an hour, and then all of a sudden you have half a dozen shots a bit quick. But, and that's, that's how it is, so. They do kind of like today, huh? Not bad. <laughs> no, they're coming in quite well today. Had a couple of nice, uh, close ones. At the end of a glorious day, we have 67 pigeons, a couple of crows and a magpie and some wonderful memories of Ruby Crow.